Movie Mistakes and Demolition Man. 24 movie goofs from the 1990s. The year is 2032, and those citizens of San Angeles who commit crimes are cryogenically frozen and incarcerated for decades. Demolition Man. Starring Sylvester Stallone, Wesley Snipes, Dennis Leary, Sandra Bullock, and Benjamin Bratt was one of my favorite movies as a kid. In 2023, at the time of this video, Demolition Man had depicted and predicted many cool things about the future. Handheld video screen tablets, video conferencing, self-driving cars with gullwing doors, censoring speech where bad words are unacceptable and can get you fined. Sylvester Stallone is still relevant. Yo, Adrian. The movie even has a digital monetary system or cryptocurrency. However, they couldn't predict I would have way too much time on my hands and could spot 24 little movie mistakes few people noticed they left in the final cut of the film. Here are those movie goofs from the 1990s. Spoiler alerts on a 30-year-old movie. Movie mistake one. Empty gas barrel moves around. John Spartan, played by Sylvester Stallone, is punching his way into a warehouse. He runs down a hall and punches a goon near a gasoline drum barrel. After he throws the goon into the wooden box, John Spartan flings a barrel backwards and away from the other drum barrel. However, in the next shot we can see through the security camera that the barrel is standing upright and touching the other barrel. Sylvester Stallone can't defy the laws of physics. I am not. Okay, different movie. Movie mistake two. Knife and cigarettes move on the table. Simon Phoenix, played by Wesley Snipes, creepily watches John Spartan on the security camera monitor and picks up a knife to puncture drums full of gasoline. Notice when he puts the knife down, a pack of cigarettes is lying on the table with drugs in the background, or vitamins. After a few cuts, Simon Phoenix stands up to face John Spartan, and the knife is facing the other direction, and the cigarette pack is rotated. Movie Mistake 3. Cold-Hearted Biometric Scanner Moves While John Spartan is being frozen for his alleged crimes by a grown-up Doogie Howser, we notice a biometric scanner disc being placed on his left pectoral muscle, or, as it's known in the scientific community, the chesticle region. In a few clips, John Spartan is frozen and we see this disc move around somehow. First from his left side to the right side of the body, then it moves back to his left side, but up near his collarbone in the northern chesticle hemisphere. Then it shifts back onto his right side, and then back onto the left side. Movie Mistake 4, The John Spartan Frozen Robot Dance When John Spartan's body is frozen and becomes a Sylvester Stallone-sickle, his right and left arms are outstretched, gasping for air. However, in a later clip we see him in a different frozen position as if he were competing in a back alley dance fight. His right arm is down at his side, his left arm is up, but his hand is rotated inward? What if he had to use the bathroom right before he was frozen? Yup, he's definitely holding it in. Movie Mistake 5 Police car door opens during fight Simon Phoenix is fighting the police officers in broad daylight. He launches one police officer into the air from the windshield of a police car. In the video camera, Simon Phoenix is about to fight another police officer that stepped out of his vehicle. The driver's side door is open and the passenger side door is closed. However, in the next cut, the passenger side door is suddenly open. Movie Mistake 6. The future is no place for backseat drivers. John Spartan and Officer Lenina Huxley, played by Sandra Bullock, are about to board one of the future six self-driving police vehicles. Spartan in the front seat, Huxley in the back seat. Since Spartan's license expired decades ago, they switch seats and Officer Huxley gets into the driver's seat and Spartan gets into the back seat. In the next shot, Spartan is gone completely from the back seat of the vehicle. He suddenly reappears as they drive away. Movie Mistake 7 Magic Bandolier and Shotgun Shells Aplenty Phoenix is browsing the Hall of Violence in the historical armory and goes on a smashing spree. He breaks a skull, then he breaks a window to get us some weapons. He dons a bandolier with shotgun shells and loads a shotgun. Immediately, in the next shot, there are two shotgun shells missing. Then, a complete bandolier, as he blasts the glass on the display cases. As he's viewing a display monitor, more shells disappear. Then at the top, two shells appear in the bandolier. We see them clearly as he packs up a few weapons. Movie Mistake 8. Exhibit Glass Disappears During the gunfight between John Spartan and Simon Phoenix in the armory, both gentlemen are behind rectangular exhibits that typically have glass on all sides. All the glass in the two exhibits around Phoenix have been broken and there are pieces of glass everywhere. However, when Phoenix attempts to make his escape, Spartan fires a shotgun at two of the now three existing exhibits as the glass reappears on all of them. Sylvester Stallone is the law of physics. I'm the law. Movie Mistake 9. Can cannonballs move around? Another fantastic scene in the armory was the use of old Civil War cannons, except they didn't act like cannons or cannonballs. We see the pile of cannonballs stacked two rows high as Simon Phoenix gets excited about the firepower. After Phoenix blasts the door in front of John Spartan, we see the pile of cannonballs now stacked three rows high, with a few iron balls grouped on the ground. 
As Phoenix exits the armory, he grabs his bag and nudges the 10-pound pile of cannonballs. The pile slides along the ground as if the cannonballs were made out of the same fake foam they used to make fake weights. Cannonballs are missing as the pile is now only two rows high. In the next shot, the cannonballs on the floor are gone. And the foam cannonball pile has a third row? Movie mistake 10. Dangerous weapons can look a little shifty. The weapons in the armory appear to shift around during the gunfight. We see the cannons close to a window and the back wall behind Simon Phoenix. As he runs from John Spartan, the automatic weapon he was using is lying behind the broken exhibit. The cannons are where they're at, compared to the walls, and we can also see a tiny fire burning in the background. Then the shift hits the fan. As Spartan exits the armory, that tiny burning fire has moved in front of the pile of cannonballs. The cannons themselves have shifted locations. The automatic weapon behind the exhibit has rotated and moved. Oh shit! Movie mistake 11. Lights on, lights off. No, on but also off. John Spartan shoots a ceiling light, causing it to plummet after Simon Phoenix. This light turns on and off like the consciousness of a 1990s underground rave. The light is on, then the light is off when shot by John Spartan's shotgun. The light turns on as it falls, but midway through it looks partially turned on. Also, is that a reflection of the light happening on some type of protective safety glass for the stuntman? As the light hits the glass flooring, it flickers on and off and on again. I feel there should be a warning about flashing lights and sensitive people during this scene. The light is now off as it falls towards the front of the car, but in the next shot it falls again backwards towards the rear of the car? Movie mistake 12. It's not too much glass if it's rock candy. As Simon Phoenix and John Spartan continue to fight in the 1990s museum exhibit, the light fixture crashes through the glass flooring, covering the hood of the car with glass. And where did this glass come from? Anyways. When Phoenix shoots back at John Spartan, he's in a different spot on the hood of the car. And where did this mass of glass come from? Maybe Simon Phoenix had a backpack full of rock candy as he planned to use it as a weapon. Later on, there is no glass on the car anymore. And then more glass on the car. Once again, not that much glass. Movie mistake 13. Silver to black gun swap and face swap. John Spartan and Officer Lenina Huxley visit Dr. Raymond Cocteau's office to ask him if Taco Bell still has chalupas and enters an executive boardroom filled with video monitors. Spartan takes out a silver handgun and destroys a few of the monitors. Later in the scene, John Spartan finds the real-life Dr. Cocteau in another room and holds a black handgun up to the doctor's head. Then it switches back to a silver handgun. I guess there are no Taco Bell chalupas in the future. Also, did you catch the random faces that were on the monitors? Dr. Cocteau's face is shown as the sole person speaking with the officers, but when Spartan fires his weapon, we can see the face of Dr. Cocteau, a tanned Dr. Cocteau, and the Quaker Oats guy on the monitors in the background. Movie Mistake 14, Benjamin Bratt Without Sunglasses Before venturing into the dark and dirty sewer system, the three San Angeles officers are all wearing sunglasses. As they climb down the ladder and into the underworld, Spartan and Huxley both take off their glasses. Except Officer Garcia, played by Benjamin Bratt, climbs down the ladder not wearing any shades. Movie Mistake 15. Pool Table Balls, Beers, and Pretzels While Simon Phoenix and his goons crew, filled with future governors, plan their dirty deeds around a pool table, it's a conspiracy. so many objects move around. The quantity of pretzels in the pretzel bowls keep changing, and the number 11 pool ball can be seen on the table, but disappears later on. Halfway through, we see one goon girl grabbing a beer bottle while sitting on the lap of another goon. In the next few shots, the green bottle is on the table. When the camera goes back to the whole pool table, this goon's beer has moved. The shotgun that was on the pool table is in another goon's hand. The green bottle is in his other hand, and goon girl is no longer sitting on the goon's groin. Also, someone ate a whole bunch of pretzels and moved a bowl? Are these Taco Bell pretzels? Movie Mistake 16. Phoenix's eye for a blue eye. As Simon Phoenix escapes the underworld and emerges from the sewers, his right eye is suddenly blue, and not his left eye, like the whole rest of the movie. Also, that his silver handgun was tucked in the left side of his vest earlier in the movie. Movie Mistake 17. Flying Sponge Car Landing When John Spartan crashes the police car into the police station water fountain, we watch as the vehicle tumbles in the water and the police car comes to a stop upside down. However, in the next shot, we see the car falling upright, as if the vehicle wasn't just upside down floating in the water. Where's the magic foam that is supposed to be in this flying police car? Maybe humans aren't ready for this level of car foam safety. If a human could walk away from any car accident without a scratch, that could be cause for concern. I'm pretty sure newly licensed drivers will be smashing into each other, driving around as if they were in an open-world bumper car track, ready for battle. Movie Mistake 18. Sandra Bullock drives a magic Oldsmobile 442. Lenina Huxley, played by Sandra Bullock, pulls up in the bullet-holed, semi-smashed 1970s Oldsmobile 442W30. She parks it near a blue vehicle, almost blocking that blue vehicle from leaving the parking lot, fairly far from this perpendicular curb. The Oldsmobile 442W30 is a magical vehicle. 
I've seen one before, but I've never seen one move into a better parking spot all on its own. After John Spartan brushes off the safety foam, we can see the 442 in the background, parked perfectly next to the curb, by a light pole and away from the blue vehicle. Vroom, vroom. Movie mistake 19. Police pop out from nowhere? Spartan and Officer Huxley walk towards the street after crashing the police car. We can see the police squad walking on the sidewalk in the background. Did you notice the light pole next to the muscle car? Well, Spartan and Huxley are walking in a specific direction which isn't towards the light pole. Immediately in the next shot, the cops pop up standing next to the light pole. And Officer Huxley and John Spartan are suddenly walking up to the Oldsmobile? Movie mistake 20, the dark side of the light pole. Spartan, the group, and the police walk past the light pole on their left side, with the red 442 Olds on the other. In the next shot, the pole is seen in the background, but on the other side? Which side did they walk on again? Movie mistake 21, the fog is lifted, return of the fog. During the whole aftermath of the police car crashing, there is some type of fog or smoke in the background of the parking lot. We see it as Officer Huxley pulls up and parks. Suddenly, that foggy smoke is gone, and the cops yell at Spartan and Huxley. It starts to appear again, almost following the group of underground people walking down the street, like that cloud that follows Pigpen from Peanuts. Movie mistake 22. Bullets, monitors, and just a jump to the left. When Simon Phoenix confronts the good Dr. Cocktoo, we see a few of the video monitors, actually all of them, are perfectly intact, in working order, and lacking any bullet holes we saw from earlier in the movie when John Spartan blasts a few monitors during his Cocktoo visit. And did you catch Associate Bob frighteningly jumping up during the shooting and transporting his scaredy cat tail to another part of the room, now in front of the swear machine? Movie mistake 23, curse word ticket machine brand new and bulletproof. During the Simon Phoenix vs. Dr. Cocktoo scene, we can clearly see a brand new curse word or language violation ticket machine behind the good doctor. It has no tickets or bullet holes anymore from the earlier scenes where John Spartan blasted the curse machine behind Dr. Cocktoo's assistant. We see a few quick shots of the morality machine before the goons pop a cap in Cocktoo's cloak. Then suddenly there are two curse word tickets hanging out of the machine? Movie mistake 24. Phoenix's hair will not freeze. I'm not certain if this is a mistake, but it felt weird. When Simon Phoenix is frozen for the final time, everything on his person, from skin to clothing, freezes and turns a frosty white color. Except his yellow hair. If I think about it, dyed hair jobs were the rage in the 90s, and preserving that hairstyle is important. Support the channel. If you all enjoy this type of video where I break down the mistakes found in Hollywood movies, like, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know I should make more.